prayer conference in Taiwan. And one day, an angel of the Lord came to me and gave me a word for Taiwan and asked the people to pray. So there were about 1,000 believers. You know, I tell you one truth. Nobody can pray like the Chinese people. When they pray, heavens will move. Mountains will move. The Chinese are great champions of prayers. So, when I gave the altar call, 1,000 people came running to the altar and they fell on their face and they were beating on their chest and they were banging their head on the floor. They were weeping and they were crying and mucus were flowing all from their nose and, this, and the whole auditorium was reverberating, shaking and moving with their cries and their prayers. This went on for 45 minutes. I was standing in one corner. I was amazed. Oh, my God. We thought the Indians are great champions of prayer. I had to change my opinion when I saw the Chinese people. Oh, my God. Look at them. So, 45 minutes of intense praying, intense banging their head on the floor, hitting their chests and crying out to God. And towards the end of the 45 minutes, an angel appeared with a bowl in his hand. And he told me, these prayers are not enough. I said, you must be kidding. <laughs> of course, even when I say like that, I say with respect, you know. I said, 45 minutes of praying and you say this is not enough? Then the angel told me, come, take a look at this bowl. And I looked into the bowl. This was a huge bowl. And there was only a small, very thin layer of a liquid at the very bottom of the bowl. So I asked the angel, what is that? Those are all the tears that these people have prayed. I said, this much? Please don't laugh. This is serious. Because you are no better than them. It's so only very low level of tears. I said, how can that be? They have cried for 45 minutes. That's when he said to me, it's not how much you cry, but how you cry. It's not how much. Quantity matters, but also quality is supreme. Were you on your face because everybody else was on your face? Were you just bowing down your head because everybody else was bowing down? Or were you really tearing your heart and crying out to God? That Tears represented the amount of people who really tore their heart and with great love, sacrificial love, they prayed to God. The rest of them went through a religious ceremony like we all do in our churches. When we call for a prayer meeting, everybody, well, not everybody comes, a handful comes. When the pastor says, let's pray, everybody keep quiet. Right? Everybody keep quiet, waiting for somebody to pray. And eventually when someone prays, the rest of them are still very quiet. They say, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. See, you don't pray, but you're just nodding your head in agreement. That amounts to nothing. This is the problem we have now. This is the problem. So when God sees such hypocrisy, even among informed people, even among those who claim to seek God, if only hypocrisy can be found, who's going to save the nation? How's the nation going to be saved? When states after states started passing on the same-sex marriage bill, what did you do? What did you do? You just hope that 
it doesn't happen in your state. But if the entire nation had done something, the Supreme Court would not have passed the bill yesterday. There would be righteous judges on the bench, not liberals, not gays who are judges on the bench. But because you did nothing, the scripture says now, God looks for one man, like Moses, stand in the gap, who will take hold of God and cry out to God. No, Lord, I will not allow that. One man stood for three million people. Right, John? And that's the same scripture that says in Ezekiel, I look for one man, one man. Now, whenever I look at the scripture, I always used to wonder, you know, if one man is all enough, but why is it that when a, a bunch of people are praying and God doesn't hear? I had this question in my heart. Today I have an answer. That bunch of people are not praying sacrificially like how Moses prayed. They pray! Still, it was a self-centered prayer. It was not a sacrificial prayer. It was not like how Moses prayed, Lord, take my life. Spare my nation, Lord. If you will not spare my nation, take my life. I don't want heaven. How many there? How many there? Is that one man, that one man who is willing to lay down his life. It took one man, you know, to die on the cross. So many people were, were hanging on the cross. So many people during the Roman reign were crucified on the cross. But there was one man who brought salvation. The rest all died for themselves. But the Lord Jesus died for you. He didn't die for himself. He denied his life like Moses. He denied himself and died for you. That made a whole lot of difference, you know. And that brought salvation. That brought a revelation of God's love that none of the angels in heaven have ever seen before. That God loved these people so much that he was willing to come down to the earth, you know, forgo all the glories of heaven. In heaven, there's streets of gold. And everything is beautiful, holy in heaven. The Lord gave up that, humbled himself like in fashion in sinful men. That was the first sacrifice he made, you know. Not the just dying on the cross. The dying on the cross was the last. The first was he took on flesh. He who cannot be seen took on flesh, which itself was death. Because this sinful flesh is prone to weakness, to sickness, to everything, fleshy. He had to overcome all his flesh, the passions. He overcome all that. He overcame all that. And then look at the rejection he went through. The people that he came to serve, the people he came to save, rejected him. That was another dying. Yet, he selflessly served them. He did not hold back. Okay, you don't believe me? Okay, I don't serve you anymore. I don't preach to you anymore. You can leave my church and go to another church. No, he still keep on serving them. Keep on praying for them. Keep on ministering to them. Ungrateful people. One saint in India once said like this, you know, serving God is serving ungrateful people. Right? Out of 10, one will be grateful. That's the ratio. The Lord Jesus himself had that problem. 10 were healed, only one came to say thank you. 
sacrificial love. So, do you love your nation so much that you are willing to stand in the gap and pray for your nation? Fourth, revelations concerning Jerusalem. If you read Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 to 39, the Lord Jesus Christ received a revelation about Jerusalem. He revealed what was going to happen to Jerusalem. He didn't stop there. He himself prayed for Jerusalem. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. And there were prophecies about the Messiah's coming, first coming. So many prophecies were given all throughout the book of the Old Testament prophets, the Messiah's birth, where he will be born, his birth as a virgin, the city where he will be born, all were written. So what did the people do? Just waited for the Messiah to be born whenever he feels like being born? No. Two people interceded and prayed for the birthing of the Messiah. If you read Luke chapter 2, Verses 36 to 38, it says that Anna, from the day she became a widow, young widow, for more than 60 years, she fasted and she prayed for the birthing of the Messiah. She never left the temple. She just stayed in a corner in the temple. 64 years, fasting and praying. Nobody can beat her record, you know. 64 years of fastings and praying for the birthing of the Messiah. Likewise, so many promises that God gives to you, for you, for your church, for your ministry. We don't just hope if God gives you a promise. You know, many people come to me for prayer. They say, you know, God said that, God said this, how come he doesn't come to pass? So I always tell them, if God truly spoke, it will come to pass. If it's not coming to pass, it means God didn't speak. Or, if God truly spoke, then wait. Why are you rushing God? When God himself is so patient, why can't you? You know, last month, I went to Nigeria for a conference. The day that I set foot on Nigeria was a fulfillment of the word the Lord spoke to me 30 years ago. 30 years ago, when I was fasting for 40 days, I saw a map of Africa. And I saw two lights lighting up, one on the east and one on the west. And knowing the geography of Africa, I knew the light, the first light was in the east was Kenya, and the second light in the west was Nigeria. So, and the Lord said, I will take you to the nation. So, okay, Lord, I waited. In 1994, the Lord brought me to Kenya. So, the first part of the prophecy came to pass. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited. It didn't bother me how long I waited. But 30 years later, from the day that it was spoken, 30 years to the day, I step foot in Nigeria. So when God speaks, when he truly speaks, it will come to pass. You need not fret about it. Don't try to help God. If you try to help God, you will end up giving birth to Ishmael's. And Ishmael will come after you with a sword like what they are doing today. One woman's costly mistake. One woman's costly mistake of a moment. For 4,000 years, the Ishmaelites are a thorn in Israel's flesh. How will God reveal his secrets? In Amos 3, 7-8, he said, God will reveal the secrets. How will he reveal? Number one, he reveals these secrets to the prophets or through a word of prophecy. 
or he may take you to heaven and you're part of the prophetic council, you hear what's been said. You read about that in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 19 to 22, and 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verses 18 to 22. There is a council in heaven where God gathers his prophets and he reveals to them before he makes any plans. He shares his secrets with them. And Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7 to 8, and Habakkuk, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It was like this in the year 2004. I was in St. Louis, and there was a great worship going on. And everybody was so lost in the worship. And I was speaking the, that night. So I was praying and waiting on God. Suddenly, I saw the heavens opened. And I saw the Lord Jesus Christ seated at a round table, surrounded by many prophets, Old Testament prophets. And I heard their discussion. And the discussion was, the Lord was saying, USA's destiny will be decided very soon. Now, this was in 2004. Satan's plan. Now, I was very, very surprised when I took, took my notes and looked at it. This was 2004. And the Lord spoke saying, Satan's plan was to make USA like Sodom and Gomorrah. Today, it has come to pass. Right? Today, it seems, sadly, Satan has succeeded. Now, the whole nation has approved same-sex marriage. What will the churches do? What is Pastor Anne going to do? What is Pastor Joe going to do when gays walk into your church? By the First Amendment constitutional right, Pastor Anne, you must marry us. Pastor Sweet, you must marry us. Here comes the test. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Here comes your test. But deep in my spirit, I feel a stirring to tell you this. There is still hope for you to overturn that ruling. If the church truly kneels down and pray, fast and pray, take hold of God, that ruling can be overruled, overturned. You have... You have a window of opportunity, a window of grace. If during this period of grace, you will kneel down and cry nationwide prayer. Don't need to make any protests. You just pray and cry out to God. Because the Bible says, the heart of the king is in the hands of God. Amen. It is in God's hand to move the king. When Esther fasted and prayed, and went before the king uninvited, she was doomed to die. But because the grace of God was upon her, when the king saw her, God moved his heart, and he stretched out the scepter towards her. And she found grace. And the king heard her petition and made a way of escape for the Jews from being destroyed. I very strongly feel in my spirit right now that if you people will bend your knees, fast and pray, there is a window of opportunity for this ruling to be overruled, to be cancelled, made null and void. Secondly, angels can come and reveal secrets to us. Daniel chapter 9, verse 3 to 27. 
the quality of intercessory prayers is dependent how much we break ourselves and pray i'm sure many of you almost all of you are sincere believers you sincerely seek god but you know most of your sincerity are still self centered because it is for yourself that is selfish i ask you today look beyond yourself why are you here are you here because you want to see some speaker and get a personal blessing for your own self that is selfish motive i know there are some here for that purpose this nation is dying because her people are self centered but if you can die to that self and like what the lord said seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness you first seek him then all these things that you need for your natural life without you opening your mouth and asking for it you will get it you don't need to say lord bless my family bless me this bless me that bless all the troubles that is surrounding me set me free don't even have to ask for all that that will be done for you when you seek his kingdom first seek seek his righteousness first when you do that then all that you need will be given unto you amen let's stand up for a word of prayer we are going to do one thing right now that wish the lord showed me what he wants to do how how he wants to bless you now you are free to come to the front to kneel down and pray if you like this evening as i went into my room the word of the lord came unto me he said tell the people to pray for four things there are three special angels that god has sent in our midst to bring a blessing for you and this is what you need to do you need to pray for four things number 1 pray for your eyes to see the things in the spirit number 2 pray that god will give you eyes to weep number 3 pray that you will have ears your ears will be open to hear in the spirit and four pray that god will give you a heart to receive the burdens of god shall we pray now close your eyes thank you wonderful god i see some wonderful angelic beings besides the angels of god angelic beings present in our midst an ancient angelic being present in our midst the anointing that was upon jeremiah the prophet that moved him to pray that moved him to cry out to god that same anointing is in our midst right now now you ask god you try to tear your heart first lord give me eyes to see you give me eyes to see into your kingdom cry for that right now next pray lord give me eyes that will weep jeremiah the prophet prayed like that oh that my head be like waters and my eyes like fountains that i may weep and pray for the 
perishing daughters of Jerusalem. So pray that your eyes will weep. That your eyes will become like fountains. Thank you, wonderful God. I see the angels of God walking in our midst right now to impart to you these graces. So you open your heart now. You cry out to God now. You should never let this opportunity go. You will never get another opportunity like this in your life. This is your Kairos moment. This is your Kairos moment. Pray that your ears will be open to hear what God will speak to you. To hear what heaven will speak to you. Don't be deaf. Don't be deaf. If you are deaf, how can you hear what God is speaking? How can you hear what the heaven is talking when God calls his saints together, when his counsels is gathered together, when God is revealing his secrets? If you are deaf, how can you hear the secrets? So pray. Pray that your ears will be open, that you can hear. Pray that your ears will be circumcised right now. Pray that your eyes will be circumcised right now. Just like the scales that fell from the eyes of Saul. And then he became poor. Let those scales, self-centered scales, selfish scales, the me, the eye scales drop from your eyes. Ask God to take away those scales from your eyes. Then you may see into heaven. That you may see the tears on the eyes of the Lord Jesus. That you may see the sorrow on the face of Jesus. How much is sorrows for your nation? How much, <laughs> How much he weeps for the nation? Pray that God will give you a heart that will be full of the burden of God. The prophets, the minor prophets in the Bible, all we said, oh, the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord. Now you cry, you ask the Lord, Give me your burden for my nation. Give me your burden, Lord. Give me your burden for the U.S. Give me your burden for Texas. Give me your burden for New York. Pray, pray. Cry out to God. You cry out to God. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Tear your heart. Tear your heart. And you cry out to God. Today, your eyes must see. Today, your ears must hear. Today, your heart must have a burden. Today, your eyes must weep. Don't get up from your knees until you have this breakthrough. Today, you must have a living encounter. Today.
Many of you have prayed a long time to see God. You have prayed a long time to have an encounter with God. Today is your day. Today is your day. And the key is dying to self. The key is dying. Dying to yourself. That is the key. Unless and until you die, you are not going to have a breakthrough. Oh, cry. Oh, you daughters and sons of U.S., cry out. Cry out. Cry. Cry out to God. Oh, the nation is sinking. Oh, the nation is sinking. Who will stand in the gap? Who will pray for her? Who will save her? Is there anyone who will stand on the gap before me that will prevent my hands from bringing judgment upon her? Who will stand? Who will stand? Who will stand? Who will go on my behalf? Who will go on my behalf? Don't stop your crying. Don't stop your crying. Don't stop your crying. Break your heart. Break your heart. Today, you must be broken. Today, you must have a transformation. Today, not tomorrow. Today. Right now, for such a time as this, you have been brought here, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear sons and daughters, for such a time as this. If you will remain silent, salvation will come for this nation to someone else but you and your father's house and your household shall perish oh my khele besa he may so thoba kashak thank you god thank you god thank you god i see the lord jesus christ like a lion of Judah walking in our midst right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's coming near every one of you and sniffing you. I see him coming near you and sniff you to see the tears that come from your heart, to see the degree of the brokenness of your heart. And I also see the angels of God standing beside you to put on you this mantle, to clothe with you on a mantle so that your eyes can see, your eyes can weep, your ears can hear, and your heart can feel the burden of God. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you, wonderful God. I see an angel of God holding a scepter in his hand, going forth to give to some who will stand like Esther, who will stand like Esther for the nation. Thank you, God. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. 
डोंट मिस दिस ऑपरचुनिटी ओ मैं खेल बहुत सोच हो बहुत सोच डोंट मिस दिस ऑपरचुनिटी थैंक यू गॉड लॉर्ड प्लीज लुक अपॉन थैंक यू लॉर्ड जीसस द लायन ऑफ जुडा इज सेइंग टू मी tell them to sincerely cry out to me tell them to sincerely ask me for the eyes to be open for the ears to be open for their heart to be open to receive the burden and for the eyes to weep with my tears open your mouth and ask sincerely Ask sincerely, ask passionately, ask sacrificially, not for yourself, but for the kingdom of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I see these angels coming and putting like a cloth upon some of you. Thank you God. You will see a difference from now onwards in your life. Your life will not going to be the same anymore. Thank you God. Don't pray self-centered prayers anymore. Don't pray even for yourself. but bearing the burden of the lord pray his burdens pray his burdens pray his burdens he is putting that mantle upon you right now right now he is putting it upon you thank you god some of you feel like a weight of a mantle put upon your shoulder you are feeling that some of you are feeling that right now like a mantle been put upon your shoulder like like you have been cloth upon some of you feel like a hand touch your eyes some of you feel like a warm glow upon your ears and some of you feel like a fire burning in your heart Thank you God. Thank you God. Oh glorious Father. Oh glorious Father. Shokhomas lekibish raflikus lamhoshade rahekais ribhigushade. Let's be quiet. Shall holy bliss the big case. Let's be quiet. I see the line of Judah lifting up his voice and saying this: Who shall go on our behalf? Who shall go on our behalf to the length and the breadth? of this nation who will go on our behalf to stand in the heart of the land to bend his knees to lift up his hands to heaven to lift up his eyes towards my throne and weep and weep and weep who will go and take hold of my hand upon the rock as moses did who will go and stand and cry like my servant jeremiah did who who I see now 
the lion transform into the Lord Jesus Christ. Wearing a long white robe standing before you. The Lord Jesus with compassion on his face and tears welling up in his eyes saying, who can I send? Who can I send? Who will carry my burden? Who can I send? He's looking here and there at all of you. What will you answer him? Who can I send? Will, will you say like Isaiah, here I am, Lord, send me. You say that to the Lord Jesus. You respond to him. Thank you, wonderful God. This Indian man here and this and his daughter with a red blouse. I see the Lord Jesus stretching out his scroll to both of you. Seek the Lord God with all your heart. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. My dear daughter, I saw for a long time. Lord Jesus stretching his scroll towards you. And to you too, my dear brother, the scroll been given. Seek the Lord, your God, with all your heart from this day onwards that it may be know made known to you what you should do. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Holy Father. The Lord Jesus shows me the destiny of your nation is hanging in the balances. The prayers of the saints, weeping saints, can make a difference. Mercy can prevail over judgment. Thank you, Father. Lift up your holy hands under the throne of God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Holy Father, Thank you for visiting your dear children tonight. You have received from their hands, their eyes, their ears, and their heart. Father, you have given unto them according 
with the dedication and sacrifice of their heart. And now I pray, from this day onwards, let their lives be changed forever. From this day onwards, let them be same no more, but do a new thing in their lives, Lord. Visit them for visions and dreams. Speak to them in their ears, in the spirit of their heart. And above all, I pray, Lord, give them your burdens. Give them your burdens that they may weep together with you. Thank you, Father. And now I ask you, Lord, lay your blessing hands upon every one of your dear children right now. Lord, you told us if we seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness, then all these things that pertain to our natural life, you will grant to us. Your children have granted, given themselves to you. So now I pray, Lord, whatever burdens there are in their heart concerning their natural estate, whatever blessings they need for themselves, grant them right now. Grant them their desired blessing. Let all their troubles melt away like wax. With whatever heavy heart they came here this evening, even from afar, let them leave this conference singing with joy in their heart because you have turned their mourning into joy. Thank you for doing that, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. 